Okay. I, well, it's now um, eight ten. I'll call the meeting to order. And um, I have a different committee. Uh, we received meeting minutes from the last meeting we had, and that was on June twenty second. So I'm going to look for a motion that we accept the meeting for any changes, deletions, additions. I need a motion to accept. Second, all in favor, aye. Aye. And that's passed. Okay, let's talk about the digital marketing campaign. All right, so I will start just by saying welcome our first official meeting since we formed the team. And I've got to tell you, on behalf of the commission, uh, we're excited about this team. We set out this to um, have five people on the team, and you know. Uh, we sat, we wrestled, and said, We've got to go with seven. We've got, we've got such good talent in this room that uh, we want to go with seven. If I have one little concern about that, is that it's, we're going to keep you occupied enough to make sure we maintain your interest. So, I mean, speak up, okay? You know, we're very, very approachable. As Chandler knows, we were texting yesterday, we were on the phone yesterday. Just whenever, if you've got questions, issues, you know, if something pops into your head that you want to communicate, free flow, okay? Don't feels if you're restricted, you have to wait for a meeting. We want this to be every bit as good an opportunity and experience for you that we hope it to be for us. Okay, so good two-way you know, communication, good free flow communication. So, so I thank you and I thank everybody who Zoomed in for being part of this uh, team. Mark, we, we have Rob and- uh, Oh, Rob's on the um, yeah. virtual. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so uh, we have to know all that stuff for and as we had a brief conversation earlier, folks, that uh, the rules for public meetings are, are such that we have to have everything available to the public and open to the public. And as students, you can appreciate that. If you want a government that's open and no one's doing things behind the curtain and no one's had to find out, although this is a lot of business that you can get, if you open up those, you know, those uh, opportunities, other things can happen that we very much appreciate. So. Uh, very good. So we, we'll have a couple of things here and here that we may say, oh, wait a minute, we've got to do this in, in a public forum or do something different, just bear with us on stuff like that. And, and of course, it's part of the learning experience, right? So, so I worked with uh, Professor Tomczyk to put together a brief agenda just to get us started. Mm -hmm. um, so that was that was the welcome. Mark and Les Patricia, unless you folks have anything else to say. Sure. Okay. Sure. Get right down into what we've done today. Let's just take a brief run through this. And we would take a look at, we've asked each of you to take a look at the marketing materials that are out there now that the town of Wallingford is using. Uh, we're going to want to go through um, a little bit of what we're doing, the brand that we've established. We want to reiterate with you, although we've talked to you briefly about it, reiterate with you, you know, who is Wallingford? I mean, and why would people want to come to Wallingford versus any other community? And talk about our strengths and, and uh, things like things of that nature, and maybe even a couple of uh, hurdles that we need to get over in order to take and uh, attract businesses. Um, value propositions for Wallingford. We'll talk about that. Uh, who are the competitors? Uh, who are we trying to attract businesses from? This is all going to be part of it's product marketing 101 stuff, right? Understand the fundamentals of your product. Understand who your customers are, and then say, "How do I reach my customers with my product?" It's 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 really not that much different than that. Although, like in any other product marketing scenario, is when the deeper you get, a little more complex it gets. Um, I'd say we're gonna we're gonna wrap up by talking about compensation. I want to make sure it's really clear as to how we're gonna do all that, which we've learned is never as simple as we think it's gonna be, but we're gonna make that work. And then we'll set a time and an agenda for our next meeting while we're here today. So we have about 45 minutes to do all this stuff so you guys can go out and do what you're, what you're here to do full time. So um, with that, um, let's talk about, well, you know, what I'd love to do is kind of go around the room a little bit and say, what did you see on the website? What did you see about Wallingford? Tell me what you see Wallingford is. And then, because that'll help us understand how effective our marketing is if, if you've got the feel for that. So. Any volunteers to get that started? Go for it, challenge. I like how it was a central location. Nice lots of everybody's going. I like how it was a central location. It was two hours to Boston, two hours to New York, and then it just in the back of your your like pamphlet, it had all the different hourly rates. So and then I like how you guys have the 
the cheap co cheaper cost of power and the cheaper cost of like maintaining your own business here. So are you talking about in, cost, in terms of cost of living or actual yeah, costs? Mill, like the mill cost because they have their own. The mill rate, got it. Yes. So in terms of taxes then? Yeah, taxes and, and also the electricity. Got it. Yeah, it seemed really strong, like with what Chandler said, on like marketing to businesses. I remember you guys saying you also want to market to like a younger crowd because I was looking at like your population data that you had on the website. And it, your like main um, ages that you have are like 26 to like 45, I think. Mm -hmm. So you want to bring in like younger families. I think that was like almost a little bit of a weak spot was how to bring those people in. Um, but like the video you had on businesses on YouTube was very strong. I felt like the one that you had on the town for like living and stuff was a little more generic and like um, almost not comparing yourself to like, this is where we're better than other places, but just like your town. Um, um, so I feel like that could be a little stronger. That's on the video, one of the two videos. Yeah. 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 Um, what jumped out at me on the videos is there was one line and it was like, we're a small town. Um, feel in a big town business space, which I thought was like a really good way to put it because although like you guys have a lot of businesses and like a lot of corporations that do like base there, um, it is still trying to attract like families who just want to be in a small town while also getting that big town feel. So I thought that was really interesting. And then also like you said, um, how you have access to highways and how it's like really good for commuters. Um, so I think that that's somebody that you could target to is people who are traveling um, who into the city who really want that hometown feel. Cool. So how about for you guys online? Was there anything that you guys saw specifically or that hasn't been mentioned that came out about the town of Bollingford? Um, for me, I just think that hammering home the fact of like the quality of life is important uh, throughout the messages that we're promoting through the website or anything um, just because you know what are the advantages of Wallingford versus a, a big city other than um, largely the quality of life you can give to your employees especially as um, the culture and nature of um, employment shifts to um, remote and other um, uh, uh, new kind of way of new ways of employment um, focusing on your employees more than um, you would um, the business itself. So I think that hammering home the quality of life for your employees will be a, a big part and in, in trying to incorporate that more into the overall messaging. Do you think that we had done that sufficiently? I, I, I know you say we could do more of that, but did that hit home or did that more, was that more you saying we could do more of this? I think we can, I think we can do more of this. I think that uh, we folk, there was a big focus on um, attra attracting like the business, but I wanted to focus more on what actually um, the quality of life for the employee would be, who uh, who you bring the businesses from. So, uh, what kind of family life there is, family life um, I would in Wallingford would be, and stuff like that. I think um, hammering a home would be better, making it the main focus um, for businesses. I'm going to build off of that quickly. What I saw was that a lot of the information that I feel like people would have needed and people would have wanted was available, but it wasn't as compelling as it could be. So that's the difference that I think that we should be making uh, with this project, especially, I mean, especially with the quality of life side and like more to, to the direct um, person who'd be living here as opposed to the business itself, because the business information is very well laid out on the website. Um, and when you're marketing towards a business, there's, there's certain steps that you have to take that are more formal, but when you're trying to appeal to an actual person to pick up and move their life, you kind of have to tell a story. And I think that um, doing that with a, a more unconventional persona or something like that can, can really have a bigger impact than mm. the information uh, simply just being laid out in a systematic manner that we might be seeing right now is what I was getting away from it. Definitely. Uh, Callum or John, do you guys have any other things? In, in reading the materials, sure. did, you, did you pick up on the fact that we have uh, a rail system that goes through Wallingford and we have a new rail station and 
Access to rail is pretty easy, either going south towards uh, New Haven and on to New York or up to Hartford, Springfield, Connecticut, and Boston. Did you pick up on that at all in what we've had in the past? Yeah, I, I saw the uh, the picture of the train station actually on the homepage of the uh, of the website. I mean, I think that it seems like a lot of the messaging on the on the business side is is focused around the location of Longford in relation to other nearby uh, areas. And like, there's a line that says Longford is within a day's drive of a third of America's uh, working power, um, and then also there's a whole bunch of statistics about how close everything is and how it's right in kind of the middle between the, the Hartford and New Haven connection. But it seems like one of the focus is on what Longford could be. And there's, there's all these sections about uh, Longford being positioned really well to be a, a new kind of hub for business. Uh, and I mean, I'd love to see more about what Longford has going for it right now. Um, and, and as well as what it could be. It's interesting. Um, being in the EDC, we're probably pushing on business more. You know, we, we look at the town and we try to get the tax dollars into the town. And maybe we didn't um, uh, go as much to the quality of life as we should. And I mean, that's what we're going to get out of this. The, um, the interesting part of it is that um, it's, it's really a chicken and egg thing. I mean, you get a lot of really good people in there who reside in Longford, but may commute outside. I mean, certainly they pay tax dollars too. Or, um, <clears throat> but you're also making those people available to businesses that are in Longford. So a business may want to go to Longford because it's closer to the population that can service them. Or is it the reverse part? Is it you really want to attract the businesses as much as possible? And then people will come to the business because that's where you go work. Mm -hmm. It's it's a chicken and egg type thing, and, it, and it's a balancing act because you can't be one or the other to the extreme. Um, I, I don't know if you noticed that. What I'm getting from you is I think we did the job or are doing the job pretty good on business, but we're not quite doing it on as projecting the quality of life that we feel wrong for that. <laughs> Am I wrong or right in saying that? Or? I would agree with that. I think because it, it almost seems like you're bringing the businesses, but people could be living in like neighboring towns to commute. And like the commute isn't necessarily that long. That would be a detriment to them. So it's almost positioning yourself of like, why would you not want to commute from like Hamden into Longford or like Cheshire into Longford? Like, why would you want to live in that city? Like, do you have superior schools? Do you have uh, superior like other town amenities that I'm somehow blanking off the side of schools right now. Well, like there's community involvement, yeah. public parks, um, activities and things that you can do with your family. Yeah, that stuff. Mm. That stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just for your edification, so these are great points. And I didn't say this in the beginning, but the way that we roll is, is, is like brainstorming. The rules are, let it fly. No sensitivities, rip it apart, well, we're going to rebuild it. So, I mean, you guys are well on your way. So thank you very much for your openness. We appreciate that. So right now, Wallingford has got this influx of folks coming in from New York because the, the, uh, the issue is that people, more and more people are working from home. They're saying, you know, when they, when they look up from their computer screens, instead of looking out the window at the brick wall or the brownstone, they want to be able to look out at some green grass and some, you know, something that's a little bit more natural and more, more you know, peaceful than uh, the looking out at, you know, another, another big brick building. So, the real estate market in Wallingford is as white hot right now as you can get. Houses are selling in a matter of hours, not even a matter of days. So, um, so all good stuff. I will add that uh, we've talked about uh, operational expenses. We'll refer to that as OPEX, uh, which is about the mill rate, about the cost of the power, and so forth. Uh, the number one criterion for a company to locate into a community is workforce. Number one. OPEX is number two. All right, and depending on what business you're in, it's going to be supply chain, logistics, et cetera. Uh, but number one is workforce. So you guys are hitting on something that says, you know, let, let's go up, let's go to the, um, to the side of quality of life because that's what's going to generate the workforce, right? So uh, very observant early on here. Good stuff, good stuff. I know someone, and if, if they could, David, I can't even see them. Oh, so say who they are as they're yeah, speaking? Yeah, sure. Speaking, so, uh, yes. 
So um, before we leave this, John, did you have anything that you wanted to add in? Um, I was just going to say that I agree with all the points, and I definitely agree with the uh, with Samantha's point about kind of telling a story because it kind of will put them in the shoes of somebody that wants to move there and kind of see like what they'd get if they actually moved um, to try to convince them that moving to Wallingford is better than where they are now um, in terms of business, but also in terms of living, because I'm, that's, that's a very important thing for families. Um, and also if they don't have a family yet, kind of making them feel comfortable about wanting to start a family in Wallingford. Mm-hmm. So I, I definitely feel like that that's very important. Yeah, that's actually a really good point. I like that you phrased it as a story that needs to be told. Because you can provide facts all you want to, but the visceral effect requires that you have something that you can connect to, and stories tend to be stronger on that. I think that, I mean, we could do a lot with um, real people telling their actual stories, if that's, like, we could gather a lot of um, firsthand accounts to to utilize in telling stories like that because people actually exist, like they actually exist in Wallingford and yeah. they have these stories themselves. So I think it'd be good to pull on them. Definitely. Um, I just think that's really interesting perspective that we can concentrate on what Wallingford could be instead of what it is. That's true. And actually, uh, I went to Iceland with the school business one time and we stopped by their marketing department. And oh my gosh, those people were so passionate because they were all about telling stories and how to attract people and how to attract tourism specifically for Iceland was all story-based, human-based, connecting people to actual real people. So I like the angle that you guys are taking. I think that has a lot of potential for the town of Wallingford. So cool. Uh, Let's talk for a second if you can about location. Chandler mentioned it. Uh, in his observation. So um, we, we try to take and, and speak about our central location in the state of Connecticut. We also try very hard to leverage our location between New York and Boston. So, uh, and, and us being in the middle. And a name, Tarek Farid, that I mentioned in the circle before, I was on the phone with Tarek Friday. He's excited that we're, we're here today. So his engagement will be forthcoming. But um, he, he, said he had the world headquarters in New York since relocated to Atlanta, Georgia, which is a separate story I'll share with you at some other point, just the way he did that. But um, what he used to say to his employees, because he would he would look for the, the, the biggest, brightest, strongest technology folks around. He'd say, I don't want the corporals, I don't want the sergeants, I don't even want the lieutenants. I want the captains. I want the best, highest ranked technology people, because it is at the heart, his business is a technology business. So all logistic technologies that he's invented and grown and on several technology companies. That said, he'd say that his employees, he's attracting people from New York. He's attracting people from Boston. He's saying, I own them five days a week. I just have to get them to be entertained two days a week. All right? So just keep that in mind. As someone talking about New York and Boston, if there's this gravitational pull towards bigger cities sometimes, but certainly the cost of living reflects that exponentially more. So there are people who will come to work, even if they commute into Wallingford, but uh, will come to, to go live in Wallingford uh, because of you know, the fact that it's, it's less expensive. Now, everything's relevant. You know, it's, it's more expensive than other areas, and, and uh, not so much Connecticut, but perhaps down south, et cetera. But, uh, uh, so I share that in terms of proximity. So if you're talking about trying to learn their own locations, it's not just our, our spot up and down the I-91 corridor, but it's trying to attract businesses, um, you know, from away from some of the from the bigger, more expensive cities, and helping them understand that your workforces will be fine here, because you, you can jump on a train and be back in the city, you know, in, in 90 minutes. So, I, I have a question regarding delivery. Um, we have a message that we've been sending out. Um, you, you referred to going, going to the website, um, and uh, we gave you some, bro- or giving you some brochures that you, you looked over to get prepared for this meeting, that type of thing. Um, what do you think of our delivery? I mean, what do we do better is probably better, because I know we can do better. Um, and, and that's going to be part of the, the, the message that we were expecting to get from you when we work together with you to do. 
Um, any off-the-cuff things that you can think of um, just to get us started on delivery of message? Do you, you guys talk a lot about, like, well, like you said, your location, but you mentioned that you like having the good workforce is first and then the operating expense and then logistics. So why don't we like change the order of how you, you tell that story? Like instead of saying like this is where we are, it's more of like uh, your operating expenses are lower or the town of Longford is, is a great place to live in the way. Change the order of message. Yeah, because like the first, the landing page, it tells me like where you are in terms of like location rather than, yeah. Yeah, that, that is kind of pushing people to be like, look at these better cities that we're nearby as opposed to we are the right destination. Good point. Good point. Yeah. Hey, hey guys, can you hear me? Can Very faintly. Well, okay, you all looked at me, so I uh, suppose you, I, one I, second. I can. Um, as I'm listening to all the comments, one thing that um, I think we need to keep in mind, we're focusing, it seems, primarily on the quality of life in Wallingford, which I think we would agree is very, very important and, 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 a, and a very noble um, um, goal. But as a company, I think we need to differentiate between what a company wants to move into town versus uh, an employee, for example. And what I mean by that is, if Wallingford is the best place to live in the state of Connecticut, it has uh, for, to raise a family, low crime rate, great schools, et cetera, et cetera. But the, what are the needs of the, and, and that's certainly a, having a strong employee base is certainly a requirement for a business for sure. But if the town, if a, if a town 10 minutes away or 15 minutes away offers significant economic advantages for that particular business, what would preclude them from moving their business to that other town and allowing employees from that who love Wallingford to travel the 15 minutes or get on a train and travel someplace? So I, I just want to make sure as we're doing this, I think it's important to differentiate what an employee wants and what the business wants um, and make sure that we understand that. Otherwise, we'll create, a, one, we'll create a, a very attractive site and a message for people to move into town, which is wonderful, but without losing sight of what the business needs and how far are they willing to travel from Wallingford to locate that business and still take advantage of the employees that live in that community? You, you, did my message get through a little bit? I, yeah. Okay. We have already, we have businesses already in Wallingford that need that town. Like you're saying, you're not going to be able to attract those people need to attract that workforce in that town as well. So there's time to spend for that. You want to attract them, but yeah, businesses already exist here that really need the talent, so we have to bring those people in as well. Mm -hmm. So, what I'm hearing, correct me if I just mistake, but I'm hearing that we need to showcase Wallingford. Uh, we need to showcase quality of life. Um, it, is a, it is a known fact that, um, and this white paper, this is not my opinion, that CEOs quite often will choose to locate their companies where they want to live. Because the way uh, work you know, schedules go these days, there's very few people that really want to take the long commutes, especially in the C-suite level. Mm -hmm. Everybody's familiar with C-suite, that kind of thing. So the, uh, you know, the CEO, if they want to live and raise their family in a community, that's one of the decision criteria as to whether they're going to come or not. So uh, I, I hear that quality of life thing uh, nice, nice, nice and clear. I've got a question. Sure, Kel. Uh, yeah. So I, I was looking through the, the website and the demographic statistics. And so I think from just going back to what you were saying about how to appeal to businesses, I, mean, I think one of the advantages that Longford has going for it is, I mean, a statistic that I thought was pretty impressive is that the annual or the average household income uh, is 77,000, which is fairly above the average of the United States and certainly uh, indicates that the residents of Longford are, are large, I mean, are higher than average income and therefore wealthier and have more money to spend. And so that might be an advantage and something to harp on when we're looking to attract new businesses. Um, and simply saying that the, that the uh, residents have a lot of money to spend. And if we can show that that's more likely to introduce more business to these companies that are coming in, that could be an advantage. Mm. 
Really good point there, Callum. I think we're also in a unique position where we imagine Wallingford as this product. There are all of these attributes that we have, the, the low energy costs because of um, a number of different factors. And then the same goes for any product. You have these attributes that you need to figure out how to create those stories and tell the benefit from that feature. And you, you kind of can, pick, it, it's a, it's a give and take between what you can pick from your target audience and what the target audience is telling you. So we're in a unique position, I feel like, because we can kind of um, help shape the future of what Wallingford could be in that we can choose the businesses that we attract here. And I think that's a question I wanna ask is, is there a specific profile of business that would be the ideal candidate or is that kind of what you're looking for us to, to tell you all. I feel like you might be the more of the experts in getting that conversation started. And then we can go from there. That's a, that's a great question, Sam. So that was Sam, right? Yes. yes. Okay, so um, yes, what we try to do, and, and not to sound cocky because we're not, uh, but we are in an enviable position in terms of we like to pick and choose what we, what we you know, what we get, okay? So, um, does the Economic Development Office at times say the businesses um, that have approached us, uh, that have reached, you know, have reached us through via various marketing campaigns, have we said, it mainly me saying, you know, you, you may be better off continuing your search someplace else, which is a polite way of saying, we really don't want to entertain your business here. Yes, we have. Yes, we have. So we have, Wallingford, like any community, has a faculty. We want to make sure that we get businesses that we feel fit nicely into that fact. So, um, categorically, there's probably nothing that I would say, you know, I mean, if it's some, you know, super fun, you know, polluter or something, then we're just not even going to entertain it. But, um, uh, so th there are companies that, you know, we do our homework. Once we start conversations with companies, we dig deep. We want to make sure we understand what they do, how they do it. Um, their culture, do they treat their employees well? I mean, we don't we don't get into the, the wells of their personnel files, but uh, we'll understand the process. We'll understand environmentally how sound they are. We'll understand the um, uh, the materials slash in some cases chemicals that they may use in their processes. We'll understand discharges. All right, so we, we want to understand all that stuff because we want to make sure we get something that we feel is a good cultural fit. It fits into the fabric of the town. That said, Sam, yes, there are businesses that we do target, and and again, we're going to rely on you folks to try to figure that figure out uh, how do we target. But we try to leverage our strengths. So, people who are large power consumers, we have the cheapest power. We have very reliable power. We also have an electric company that is an independent enterprise. All right, they fix the electric company. Our, our public utilities, our electric division, our water or sewer division, they are separately run enterprises. They have to, their rates are set based on what they need to collect in order to maintain their, their, their power grid, in order to maintain the poles, the lines, trim the trees, maintain all the switches, the, the transformer. Their whole rate schedule is set that way. The town of Wallingford does not reach into those coffers and pull any money out, which is one of the, that is the unique component of our public utilities. There are four other communities in this, uh, three other communities in the state of, town, or the state of Connecticut rather, that have their own public utility. What differentiates us is that we don't reach into those public utility coffers and pull any money into the general fund. Okay? So there's, there's separately run enterprises. So that's translating to the rate payer. The rate payer pays substantially less because of that. One of the reasons. <laughs> You, 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 hey, uh, Tim, I'd just like to add one comment to that because it, it doesn't come clearly through our website commentary. One critical component of that, uh, our ability to own our uh, own electricity company is because of the reliability that we offer. We have a different set of criteria in maintaining our infrastructure. Um, so I think somebody should maybe do some due diligence in terms of uptime um, of our electric grid compared to the UI and um, and Eversource, I think that'd be a good differentiator for sure. 
very good route. So I, I share the, the separate and uh, wholly owned, you know, separate enterprise on the public utility side to say that the more power they sell, the better off we are, right? So it's like anything else, like any other product partner, their, their job is to sell power. So in, back to your question, Sam, I'm, gonna, I'm kind of I'm running around the circle on it, but back to the question is, so who do we want to try to attract? We want to try to attract companies that are that are heavily relying on power. Because A, we've got the cheapest, we've got extremely reliable power, and we want to sell more of it. We also want to attract com companies that use a lot of water for the exact same reasons. We've got plenty of it, we've got excess capacity, and um, track, the fact of the matter is with water, all the conservation efforts that have happened over the last decade or so, we're actually selling less water now than we did a decade ago. All right, so the water division is always economic development guys, bring me water use, bring me big water uses. I've got all this water and I can't run my enterprise unless I sell the water. So bring me water users. So yes, heavy power users, heavy water users, environmentally sensitive, aware of companies, those are the types of uh, people. And I'll add this, um, is that an economic development um, commission's job is to grow that grant list we spoke about briefly once before. Everybody familiar with the grant list? Why we go through that again? Or? Uh, it's a winner. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So the grand list is that list of taxable properties in any community that the community is reliant on. That's how the community pays for its services. It pays for its, its schools and its road repairs and, and government, et cetera. So all the uh, programs that we have, recreational programs, parks, linear trails, all of those things that we have are paid for through tax money. And the grand list, whether it be someone's house, whether it be a business, all right, the grand list is that list of taxable properties uh, in a community that generate the revenue so that you can, you can sustain and then grow all those nice amenities that we're so accustomed to. So our job is to grow the grand list. Now, that said, by bringing in, uh, the other thing we target is tax paying entities. All right, you can't grow a tax, you can't grow a grand list by bringing in you know, institutions that don't pay taxes. And this is a, an example. And I realize I'm gonna say this in front of a group of students. However, in our industrial zone, all right, which is, which is an area that the town is designated for industrial business growth, they built an infrastructure, roads, electric, water, sewer, gas, all, I mean, fiber up, all the infrastructure into the industrial area with the expectation that when people move in, they can start paying taxes, we're gonna get free, we're gonna get our money back. Right? That's a finite area. That's a finite area. Yeah, it's a defined area. Mm -hmm. So you only have X amounts, one pie, that's it. So <clears throat> a couple of years ago, it was it was a um, it was it was frankly overseen somehow within our zoning regulations, it allowed for educational uses in the industrial zone. And we were looking at a pretty sizable site, you know, site in our industrial zone that could have potentially been occupied by a school. And we said, no way. What? The schools don't pay taxes. So we built an infrastructure out, and we're gonna we're gonna put somebody there that we're not gonna get any tax revenue from. So we changed the zoning regulation. Not a not a popular decision in all circles. But I'm hoping that as business majors, you guys can understand that. Every community, in our opinion, has the social responsibility to do their part when it comes to nonprofit enterprises. And what makes Wallingford attractive to for-profit enterprises, low outbacks, low spend, makes us doubly attractive to non-for-profit, doubly. So we are actually overweighted right now in non-for-profit enterprises. All right, so what we need to drive our marketing messages towards is for-profit, Tax paying energy. All right, that's good with everybody. Make sense? Everybody get that on, the, on that side? Any questions from that? <clears throat> so, Sam, that was probably the longest answer to a short question you'll ever hear, but. <laughs> <laughs>
I feel at the same time I've got to take and kind of bring everybody into the squad with a you know, broader spectrum of information. Um, some of the information that you, you uh, will receive or may have seen on the website, we have a, a fair amount of companies that are world headquartered in Longford, or at least nationally headquartered in Longford. Um, if you don't have that information, we can get into it, but it's always been like six or seven of them. Mm -hmm. six or seven companies to do that. That may or may not be something that we can play off of. I mean, obviously, if they're world headquarters, and there's some significant ones, um, it says something of the town. Why, why did you do that? And, and maybe that's one of the things we start, should start pushing for, is you're already in the town. Why are you here? Why is it such a benefit for being in the town? You never left the town. You're still here. Mm -hmm. Why? And that may be something that we want to kind of work out, you know, and then promote. So just, I'm just not so sure that we're, we're doing the right thing with our website and the little brochures we have, we go to some meetings, we hand out pencils and, you know, that type of thing. I'm just not sure that's the best way to do it. So I, I'm going to be looking, and I think the whole committee is going to be looking for ideas of how can we do this better than what we're doing right now. And maybe social media, maybe whatever we're missing. I think you're on, you guys are on the cutting edge of that. You see it, you know, you're working at it on a daily basis for your classes and, and in your own businesses. So um, I, I think that's what the committee is looking to, towards also. So let me do a quick, Continue. sorry, let me do a quick time check is 8.46. So Kellen, by all means, you can ask your question, but I want to make sure that we also can give marching orders going forward. Yeah, I was thinking about Channel, yeah. which is another 44 minutes. Yes. Well, We'll do that. Okay, cool. So go ahead, Cal. To continue on what you were saying on on what Wallingford has also and, and what the uh, what the consumers um, why they came to Wallingford, I think it would also be really important to focus on who they are and seeking to try to align the the residents of Wallingford and who they are with kind of the ideal consumers that the businesses we're looking to attract are looking for. And by kind of packaging the experience of what Longford is to attract new people, but then also packaging the idea of what a Longford resident is to these businesses and kind of marketing them as the ideal consumer and aligning who they're looking to sell their products to. I think we can look to kind of identify uh, companies that would be an ideal fit for Longford based on who their ideal consumers are. Awesome. Also, I, I had a question just based on your, your uh, insights on attracting businesses that rely on cheap energy and cheap water. What are, how extensive are, is the agricultural uh, industry in Longford? So that's the first thing that comes to mind when I think of companies that rely on cheap energy and, and water. So Wallingford is actually um, has a farm heritage. And there are uh, several active farms still in Wallingford, and we don't want to change that. There's a, areas, Wallingford, as a lifelong resident, I, but I haven't been doing this for a long time, I remember stepping into this job, and once I got really familiar with the lay of the land, I was like, whoever laid this down out really did a great job. We've got industrial areas set in certain places, we've got residential, obviously those lines meet someplace, but there's very little spillover. We've got farmland, mostly on the east side of our community, rolling hills, I mean, a lot of open space that the town has purchased. I really think we've got a, such a great balance. So farming today, uh, and it's not just a long thing, it's a Connecticut thing. Uh, to, to plow dirt today, it, it just it, it doesn't pencil. It's way too expensive to do it versus the yield that you can get from any crop. However, that said, hydroponic farming, I am a big fan. And we have, we have worked on a number of, uh, we had we a, a European company that we were so close to attracting to a piece of property to do hydroponic farming. And I don't want to go we'll get into it now, but it's a nice, it's a nice side conversation for another meeting, but hydroponics is it's all about maximizing yield, minimum impact on, on the land, and it leverages the strengths that we have. So I would love to be to maintain a component of our, our farm heritage in our community. Um, as you know, farming, tilling soil continues to become more and more onerous. I 
think I'm the bottom has got a point for another conversation. And would you want to do multiple, I guess, campaigns like one for like the farming, like company, one for manufacturing company, and different? Well, well, sure, you're open to the suggestion of doing that. And then you have to, at the end of the day, look at the expense of doing something like that. Expense of time, expense of money, and something like that. And also, <clears throat> make sure you're not sending out a mixed message. <laughs> you know, so uh, sometimes one message that you cover those all is great. Sometimes you can't do it. But I think that's, that's certainly one thing that we should be discussing for sure. You know, if, if that's the case, we're already a fairly large bedding plant farming community. You know, we make the mums and all that stuff. They grow all that stuff and they sell it the stores. Pretty, not as big as Cheshire, but the beef have still have a pretty good size. I have several of them. So yeah, it's one of those things we have to look at. Yeah. It's now ten of them. So uh, so we uh, there's one more company. Uh, you guys said there are companies that we're not buying yeah, hot facilities and stuff like that. That's companies that are that require water and warm energy. So yeah. that is something that we're not buying. Awesome. Yeah, so okay. It's a very that's a very important point here in that um, the position that town has taken on uh, any type of marijuana growing. Facilities or dispensaries because again, yes, they use a lot of water, but they use an excessive amount of water in power. However, so long as marijuana is against federal law, the position that town has taken is that they will not ever take any type of facilities like that. All right, if it ever becomes legal on the federal level, it's a different ballgame right now. That is good to know. Thank yeah. you for bringing that up. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So we have to go to the marching waters and take like yes. we'll uh, some direction here. Okay. So the idea for overall how we're going to be working is we're going to kind of follow how I do the small business marketing class, which is the first thing is make sure that you guys all understand how Wallingford is right now. We need to do an assessment of what currently exists. What are the current values and whatnot? And we've already started to touch on a lot of this already. You guys have asked the right questions to push us in that direction. Awesome. Once we fully understand everything, then we start making recommendations. Because if we start making recommendations early, we lock our brains in, and that pre prevents us from being able to figure out what is the optimal or best approaches overall for the town. So I talked back and forth with Tim a bit, and we said that there's three core areas. One is how does the world view Wallingford? So what is the perception of Wallingford by outside sources? So it's sort of a branding analysis. The second is what value propositions does Wallingford want to convey and or currently conveys? And so that would be done through interviews. So Sam, I think to your point earlier about needing to talk to people. So have a, a group of people, two to three, who track down and, and talk to key people through the town and to the local businesses. And then the third one is who are competitor towns and what are they doing to attract business? And that's a competitor analysis so we can see who is pulling the these businesses away and who are we going up against and what are they doing? Because if we don't know what they're doing and we're like, oh, we're gonna compete in the social media space and all the other towns are competing by direct mailings, then most businesses will probably be looking for direct mailings, not the social media, and then that whole thing just falls apart. So those would be the three components. And then when we have all of them, we can pull them together and create a big picture. And then that gives us a way easier way to say, now let's create the whole analysis, uh, or not analysis, but the recommendations. We'll generate a whole bunch of ones. We'll distill them down to what are the most effective ones that we can see. So biggest buck for our bang everything from guerrilla marketing to social media to, to whatever. And we keep saying social media, social media may actually be the least effective for all we know. So don't get wet into any one particular idea. Once we have that, then we get to go to the implementation stage and then we carry forward from there. The idea is to move relatively quickly through the analysis stage and the brainstorming stage too. So we're looking at one to two weeks for each one. So that way we can start saying, hey, this is what it is. If things end up taking more time, because you guys hit a minefield or you find something that's really, really important and it's a thing that we should invest time in, great, we're gonna do it because we wanna be thorough and good rather than quick. But 
we don't want to linger on anything for too long because the implementation stage is where we're going to see the biggest bang for the buck. So the idea was that for each of the three tests, the branding analysis, the interviews, and the competitor analysis, maybe do small subsets of two to three people for each one. So that way you guys can go out, do whatever, come back for next week, and we should be set to go. Any questions about what I just said? So David, clarify for me what our expectations are of each team member. Are each going to tackle each of those three? No, they'll do it in small teams. So each, okay. uh, so in two or three person teams, they will tackle one of those tasks. Okay. So that way they can go deep rather than everyone going shallow and likely hitting the same sources. Okay. Yep. How, how will the teams be set up? So I know that each of you guys has some level of expertise in various areas. So my thought was, since I have not actually read your resumes, um, <laughs> and I don't necessarily know what you guys feel the most comfortable doing, <clears throat> if anyone had specific preferences of things that they'd like to do, and then it would be probably two for the branding analysis, two for the competitor analysis, and three for doing the interviews, because the interviews will take the most time. And, but interviews will also get you connected to the most people. So yeah, that was what I was thinking. So did anyone have any preferences one way or the other towards any of those three positions? Because otherwise what we'll do is we'll say, cool, arbitrary division of labor by random numbers in my head. Yeah, I'll take anything. I'd like to do interviews. branding. Not interviews, okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Sorry, Callum? I'd like to do the branding analysis. Branding analysis, okay, cool. Um, I have a question. Is the expectation for the interview that like, can you, can you repeat that one? Sure, so for interviews, it, we're not looking for two hour interviews or anything. You would be talking to either key government people, so talking to Tim and the, the commission here, um, talking to existing business or business owners and anyone that they may identify that might be might have interesting insights the goal is to understand what does wallingford for the businesses that are there what drew them to wallingford and why are they staying and for other people what are other values propositions uh, so things that wallingford offers that could draw people in okay um i can do that one. Okay. awesome so sam we'll put you down as one of our sam is doing which Sam is doing interviews, Callum is doing branding analysis, and then did anyone else have any other preferences? I did the uh, competitor analysis. <laughs> and Jack for the competitor analysis. Cool. I gotta go for my class, by the way, too. Sure. Okay. I did, I did too, actually. Okay, cool. So, well, we have Callum and Jack listed, so awesome. And then I'll fill you guys in on the anything that you miss. I'm trying to keep Awesome, thank you. What, so. Bye. Yep. So far, I've got Callum doing uh, branding analysis, I've got Sam doing interviews, I've got Jack doing competitor analysis. Yep. Okay. So Since I am not seeing anywhere. any other uh, things, so Brenna, I think let's have you do competitor analysis. Okay. Don't have a awesome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for the other person doing branding analysis, and that's what Jack had my right? Yes. Sorry. Uh, I, I can work on that one too. John, awesome. Sure. John is on the branding analysis. Okay. So, so that's, that's yeah. cool. We have Callum and John, John and branding analysis. So okay. Chandler and your I have a reference. Sh S H A Y? Yeah. Yeah. S H A Y. Um, I don't have a preference, but I think that interviews. Yes, interviews. So it'll be Chandler, Shay, and Sam will do the interviews. And then Callum and John doing the branding analysis, and Jack and Brenna doing the competitor analysis. And I think that this will be good because if, because uh, Callum works, has a, his own company, and he works on that. John has grown some very large accounts, and so uh, social media accounts, so I would think that there is a bit of a knowledge base on that. Uh, so I know Shay and Sam, you guys come from non-entrepreneurship backgrounds, but ones where you're actually talking to people uh, is a 
strength of yours. So that's great. And you know, Chandler's kind of a nice guy. So <laughs> that'll go over well. And then Jack is a very analytical person. And I know Brenda, that is one of your strong points too. And that makes sense then for you guys to do the competitor analysis. So cool. I think this worked out perfectly. <laughs> All right, excellent. All right, so be mindful of the, the time. You need to set the next meeting. Mm -hmm. Before we do that, I just want to talk about compensation. Okay, so we said to each of you that our vision was to take and pay $500 each half year. And then in the early conversation with the Professor Tomczyk, we said, well, between now, so we're starting in October, this is going to run un unbroken all the way to the end of May. Yeah, so even through winter break. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Yeah, marketing doesn't stop because you're not here, so we're going to keep the thing going. Right? So it's eight months, and it was his recommendation that we pay you every two months as opposed to waiting. Yeah. All right? So it, it, I think it comes up to 125 bucks every two months. Yep. Okay? We're doing that? Yeah, and sounds right. good. Yeah. So I want to make sure that we're just clear so everybody's on board. So get nods on that side, too, what we would have said. Yep. Uh, is, John, give me a thumbs up. And Sam also gave me a thumbs up. So yes. Cool. Right, we go to 19. Next meeting. This this uh, time of day works for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Will these meetings generally be like an hour long? I just have an appointment next Monday, but I will be available from like eight to nine. Okay. So wait, we're looking at. What the twelfth next week or the nineteenth? Okay, so this would be two Mondays from now. So does that change your availability then, Sam? Um, do Mondays work well for people? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Generally speaking, yes, Mondays are good for me. Okay. Um, so we're looking at Monday the 19th at 8 o'clock. Does that work for everybody? Yeah. Okay. okay it, would you be able to do an hour meeting on Monday the 19th, Sam? Yeah. Okay, cool. Okay, so what I'll do is I will re-forward the link from today's meeting. So we'll just use this as our ongoing link so you guys don't have to get a new one each time. And um, if you have questions about what your tasks are, or if you need help breaking things down or whatnot, let me know, let Tim know. We're happy to help out as much as we can. Especially those who are in the interviews. Yes. Um, so Shay, sure, so Shay, Chandler, Sam. So if we want to talk to some businesses, start with me, let's have a discussion, we'll categorically yeah. select some, I'll make the introductions, and I'll put some. Let's have a list of all the commissioners out to them also. So they would have to interview any of the other commissioners. Yeah. That seems like a great idea. I like it. They're going to be different than what we're presenting, so it won't be much different, but it'll be different for you. Yes. Yeah. So we'll set that up. So that be good idea. Okay, so I guess everyone has two weeks then to get so delve even deeper. <laughs> Sounds good. Any other questions or comments before you turn the meeting? Um, I guess I just wanted to know if you guys had any competing times you specifically wanted us to look at before we like went and looked around on our own. Say that once again, please. Um, do you have any specific competitor towns that you like come to mind for you guys, or should oh. we just kind of go out see what we can find? I think that's a great question. I would look at North Haven. Okay. I'd look at Southington. Southington. Uh, Southington. Okay. Just South I N G T O N. Okay. Um. Look at Nogatak. Oh, you're going to spell that one. <laughs> N-A-U-G-A-T-U-C-K. Okay. You start with those. So from a population standpoint, from a uh, demographic standpoint, from a business mix standpoint, they're relatively close. Okay. okay. And you want us to look specifically like in Connected? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Tim, can I also throw in um, some um, wild cards? Because when you do a competitive analysis, yeah. We want to make sure if those other towns, they may not be uh, as successful as we would like to be. So certainly understanding what their techniques and, uh, and their strategies are important, but we may not necessarily want to duplicate theirs, but create our own. So I might also throw in to take a look just to do some general searching to see if you can find some 
other towns perhaps with similar demographics that perhaps have shown an, uh, um, um, an increase or a large increase in their um, uh, capabilities of attracting businesses, if you can find a metric like that, and then let's see what they're doing as well. Mm -hmm. Good point, Rob. It, it might not even be in Connecticut necessarily. Hope it should be in Connecticut, but if it's not, um, you know, just to see some of the techniques they're they're employing. Okay, mm -hmm. sounds good. Further questions or comments? Anything else, that, Sam, John? Do you guys have anything else that you need or would like to know about? For a motion to adjourn the meeting. Motion. All in favor, aye. Aye.